Good morning, Rotarians and guests. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Hudson. Ron Strobel, the Sergeant at Arms. And our invocation this morning is by Marilyn Orr. Today's invocation is a reflection on service by a written by a Rotarian named Sean Bird. Sean Bird is a member of the Shawaps Lake uh, Rotary Club, and they're located in Western Canada uh, in British Columbia. And right now they're experiencing some trouble with the fires that are happening there. But he's a poet, and so here we go. Service happens in laughter and friendship. Service happens in quiet conviction. Service happens with firm intention. Service happens in growing kinship to all humanity with attention. Today we honor service above self. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. And to lead us in the pledge and four-way test, David Basil. Good morning, fellow Rotarians and guests. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. First, is it the truth? Second. Third. And fourth. Thank you, David. Um, our uh, songmaster is, uh, has a sore throat, so there'll be no singing today. <laughs> um, our president, Terry Borkner. Good morning, everyone. Before we get started, this Yeti was left at the um, beer garden. So if anybody knows who it belongs to, I'll happily pass it along. Um, okay. So a couple of things today. Um, we, is there a foundation? Keith, there's a foundation meeting this morning right after the meeting. So anybody who is available to attend the foundation meeting, uh, if you're a member, please do, do so. Um, Pints to In Polio is going to be um, having several different events throughout some of the um, wineries and breweries in the area, and they are going to have one on September 21st here at the new Green Valley Brewery on Milford in town. It used to be, um, Oh, the game place. I'm forgetting what the name of it is, but but that's where the new brewery is. And the fellow who opened that had worked for Hi Ho down at Cahoga Falls. So um, I expect that it's going to be a, a good brewery. So mark that on your calendars, September 21st. And if you can, please attend uh, to raise some money for the pints for polio. Um, Hawaii, um, we... I got a notice from the um, Shelter Box USA, who is partnering with the Hawaii Rotary District 5000's My uh, Maui Fire Relief Fund. At this time, uh, Shelter Box isn't doing anything, but they are helping um, the local district there in the area. If anyone wants to send even $10 to the relief fund, I'm going to send out the email that I received. It's got the um, link 
where you can do that. And again, you know, $10 multiplied by thousands and thousands and thousands can be very helpful. So it doesn't have to be a large donation, but something to help help in the uh, search and recovery and restoration of the area there in Maui. I don't know if you've ever been there. It was a lovely, lovely place. And it's tragic uh, beyond words what has happened there. So any relief would be greatly um, appreciated by them. Today, we have a new member to induct. Gail, if you'd like to come down. We're finally going to get you inducted officially into, into the club. This will be my, my first induction too. <laughs> uh, we are so pleased to have you as a member. Um, Gail, on behalf of the board and membership of the Rotary Club of Hudson, it is a great pleasure to welcome you as the newest member of our club. We look forward to the fellowship that we will share as well as your participation in many of the club projects that make our community, country, and world a better place to live. Rotary is an organization of business and professional people pledged to uphold the highest ethical and moral standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and peace can be achieved when business people unite with Rotary motto of service above self, which you've already proven to us. Rotary activities exemplify the charity and sacrifice that one would expect from people who believe that they have a responsibility to help others. Gail Cobb, you've been chosen for membership in the Rotary Club of Hudson because your fellow members believe you to be a leader in our community and because you possess the qualities to champion the message and principles of Rotary. You now become an ambassador of Rotary, carrying the ideals of service to all within your sphere of influence. Our community will know and judge Rotary by your character and service. We will also look to you for inspiration as we strive to become better Rotarians. We now ask your sponsoring Rotarians to vest you with the distinguishing badge of Rotarian, your Rotary pin and name, badge. Um, and we ask that you wear your rotary pin with pride, not only to all rotary functions, but in your many endeavors as a member, as a symbol of your commitment to rotary ideals and our recognition of your contributions to a better world. Fellow Rotarians, please rise and welcome our newest Rotarian, Gail Cobb. <laughs> And might I add that those of us who came in during COVID never got a pin. So I'm going to order myself one. <laughs> Congratulations, Gail. Welcome to the club. Okay. Okay. And with that, I am going to pass the mic along to Jim to introduce our speaker of the day. Good morning. This, uh, this week concludes the uh, local and regional service month, our speakers talking about services. Um, today's going to be an honor to introduce uh, Tom Sheridan here in a second, uh, city manager, and talk about city services in Hudson. I have one little anecdotal story about city services. Throughout my career, I lived in five small, this is the fifth small town I lived in moving around. And there was one in Massachusetts I moved to. I asked my neighbor, what do I do about trash pickup? And he looked at me, trash pickup? We don't have trash pickup. We take it to a transfer station, dump. And with that, it's been like that. That town's been around since 18, 20, uh, 1620. And it is just uh, the greatest place, I mentioned it to Tom, and he, he said, it's like going to Heinen's. You meet all your friends and neighbors and p the politicians there with tables and Boy Scouts and everybody else. So every city is unique in its own way. A lot of the common services, but some unique things that I hope Tom kind of shares some things that we're doing in Hudson that we may or may not know about. But Tom has been, a um, little bit about Tom. 
He's been married to his wife, Christine, for 31 years and have one daughter and three sons. He graduated from Youngstown State in 1919. <laughs> That's a shadow on the nine there, sorry. 1990. Uh, he holds up well and uh, with a bachelor degree in majoring in civil engineering. He's worked in the private sector and the public sector in the state and local levels for the past 35 years in several states, including Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. He started his career as a design civil engineer in 1990, became assistant city engineer in 2002, assistant service director in 2005, civil uh, city engineer in 2008, and an assistant city manager in 2017, now Hudson City Manager for the past year. He has extensive management and public service experience. He currently manages, ready? Police, fire, EMS, solicitor, communication, public works, park, engineering, finance, IT, velocity, broadband, community development, and administration. Wow. He has some of the best staff to work with, and a couple of them are here, and hopefully he'll get a chance to introduce uh, both Jody and Lydia. Uh, he has professional licenses in Pennsylvania and Ohio, the license engineer, surveyor, flood, uh, floodplain manager, and water distribution operator. He likes jogging, kayaking, biking, hiking, spending time with his family and friends when his schedule permits. Tom has a proven track record of success in both public and private sectors. He loves working for the city of Hudson and is committed to make it better. A place to work, live, and raise a family. So it's a great pleasure to have Tom here. Let's give him a great welcome. Good morning, everybody. It is uh, my honor, again, to be at Rotary. I think I came last year when I was interim city manager. And uh, before that, when I was city engineer several, probably a decade ago, I guess, I was looking back at some of my old notes. Um, this is truly one of the greatest organizations we have in Hudson. Um, the Kiwanas and the other afternoon Rotary, uh, I've been to all of those too. And uh, I really appreciate you guys having me here today. Um, as Jim said, I want to thank Jim for the invite, um, the Public Service Month. This is near and dear to my heart. Um, when you start out, I got to give a little background on me. Um, when I started out, I wanted to be like the best engineer I could be. And um, I was the skinniest of all the people on our crew. So they used to lower me into the sewers. And at the time, I thought, well, you know, this, this must be engineering. But it was actually public service and people were having sewage back up in their basement. And there is nothing besides a fire in a house that is going to be more impactful to people than that. And I, I had to meet the people and I had to guarantee them that we wouldn't have backups in the future with our, our designs. And uh, that was my first real taste, I think, of customer service working for the, you know, the public. And I enjoyed every minute of it at the time. You don't know that until you actually get, you know, 35 years experience and you look back and go, wow, this is how I, it all came about. None of it was planned. Um, I started out and I just wanted to be an engineer. That was all I ever wanted to do. And I was glad to be out with, you know, as in Western Pennsylvania, which was near where I went to college and everything else. So, but I guess looking back on, and, and any of us can, you know, say this too, but I know you guys have your, your four keys there, but Mine have always been similar to yours. Um, be honest, period, first thing. Um, be fair to everybody. I, I'm not the nicest guy in the world. I try to be when on my off time, but, um, but if you're fair to everybody, there's a consistency there that everybody will like. Communicate, and I'll introduce our communication team here in a second, but communication in this day and age is very important uh, for public service. And then a few things just Last time I was here, the uh, high school kids were here, and I thought they might be back again. But if I could give any of the young career people moving forward in their careers, love your work. I love every day. Believe it or not, I, I do. You know, the hardest days are sometimes the ones you look back on and reflect on the most. That you, you change somebody's life with that. Um, strive to be my best every day, and I challenge every day I wake up. I want to challenge that day. So I, I know everyone has their own goals and things, but... I think those are the three, you know, working hard, striving to be your best and challenge every day are, are my keys. Um, 
go over the presentation. I'll just kind of slide up here a little bit. Um, again, City of Hudson, it's our new City Hall building and um, renovated that a few years ago, bought it in, I think, 2018, renovated in 2019, moved in in 2019. And uh, I think it's one of the, the, the great stories of Hudson. We were able to renovate, uh, tw it's 20 acres, 200 and some parking spaces, 33,000 square feet. We were looking at a price tag of a building like that, and we probably never would have found uh, 20 acres in, in town that easily. Uh, probably would have been in the market of 15 million plus. We got that renovated and brought up to standards for, you know, seven, 8,000, seven or six to eight, seven million dollars, which I thought was uh, another thing. And we got to reuse, recycle a building, and that's always great. Um, next slide. These are our key elected officials. Um, as you can see, I think most of you know them. So um, go ahead, next slide, Noah. This is our organizational chart of the city. And it, we all work for the citizens, uh, every one of us. That's one thing we all have in common, the boards, the city council, the mayor, myself, and all the team underneath me. And I, I couldn't do this job you know, without that team underneath me. And uh, I think everybody brings their A game every day of the week, every day of the week, our every department. You might know the chiefs or you know, city managers or assistant city managers, but even all the way down to our maintenance people, everybody works and strives to be the best in the city. Next slide. This is probably the most important slide of them all. Um, we have two key members here from our communication team. I'd like them to stand real quick is Jody Roberts and Lydia Pope. Um, they handle all the communication, the websites in our town. Uh, they keep everybody informed. They review social media, all the newspapers every day. And uh, they keep me informed on anything I need to know about that's going on in the city. But they, all these 157 plus the 50 part-time and seasonals, and I, I mean this, this job is easy because of them. They all do their job. They all meet with me. They ask for my guidance. I give it to them. And um, we're all problem solvers. And I've always been a problem solver as, since I was an engineer. So I, I use that same concept here with uh, managing the staff. And um, they seem to appreciate it. And I communicate with them as quickly as I can, give them the answers that they need. Sometimes they're not the answers they want to hear, but um, it is what it is. Noah, uh, if you could go to the next slide. This is just a little background on our how we're doing in the city. We're financially strong. You can see all that in the handouts you all have, but uh, income taxes are up 10%. Um, you know, our general fund and, and the carryover, we target it for 40% every year. Every council I've worked with in the city of Hudson has managed very well the city's finances. And I can't say enough about that. Uh, it, it's been tremendous and it makes our jobs easier. Um, we all have a plan. We have a five-year plan. We've already done next year's budget already internally, and then we'll take it out to the city council here. Uh, I believe in September is our first meeting on budget. Communities I used to work with, they have till the end of the first quarter of the year to get their budget in. City council in Hudson gets their budget in the first meeting in December. So kudos to the city on that. And we also get better prices from asphalt contractors, for example, that pave our streets because we get in earlier than everybody else because they don't have their budgets approved. So again, little things like that, just moving that around in time is, is a wonderful thing and it saves the taxpayers money, which is what we're always trying to strive to do. Our budget's about $97 million. We try to maintain that. It's been that way for the last couple of years. And as you see, you know, council has been reinvesting millions of dollars in the infrastructure and giving back to the community which is always a wonderful thing. And that's one of the reasons I love being in Hudson and it's a great public service too. Um, we've had clean audits for the last few years and we have AAA bond rating. So uh, our finance team, the finance director and his staff do a great job. And we have never had any issues with any finance. We've won a lot of awards. So next slide. Mid-year, just wanted to kind of show you a check-in because um, basically, we're still doing well. I won't go into too much detail here. You can read this, um, but all of our operating funds are doing well. Water and electric have increased sales. Ellsworth Golf Course, which I'll talk about later in slides, is doing tremendous. And Velocity Broadband, um, you know, we're, we're, we're gaining revenue on that um, utility, and we're coming up with our 500 customer here, which I'll go into in a few minutes. Next slide. 
just some of our capital projects. Um, I think the, the rate, a few years ago, the council wanted to get the highest rated roads in the city, and they gave millions of dollars to the staff in order to do that. Our ratings are around a 78 out of 100, which in the state of Ohio is pretty high. It's if not one of the highest, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we're doing good there. We're still going after a lot of grants with ODOT. Um, our city engineer just submitted some stuff to council recently about ODOT grants, and uh, we'll be applying for those at the end of the year. Veterans Trail Phase 3, which is just on the other side of Ellsworth Golf Course, is done. It's a gravel trail. It's beautiful. If you get a chance, walk over there. The sidewalks, like the one in front of this uh, complex here along Barlow Road, um, city council in 2020 did a five-year program with $20 million. And we've been doing the sidewalks. You see them going in on Middleton, Herrick Park. We're starting the ones out on 303. That'll connect from Hayden all the way out to Streetsboro and then up to uh, Hudson Springs Park. That's this year. Uh, Middleton Road from 91 over to Valley View will be later this year. So all of Middleton Road will be completed with sidewalks. And then we have two more years under this program. We're on target, on time, and on budget. So that's always a good thing. Barlow Community Center Ponds, I'm glad to say that that project is done. Uh, we've been out there three or four times and, and made improvements. That is the detention pond for that downtown area. And as you know, we had major flooding 20 years ago, July 21st, 2003. I remember the day like it was yesterday. I wasn't in Hudson at the time, but I was in Stowe to the south, and we got hit with the same 300-year storm event. So in case anybody ever wonders, that was a 300-year storm event that hit. <clears throat> We've done a, a lot of improvements, and our HCTV staff is going to be putting out a video explaining all the different improvements the city has done. And we're not done. We're not becoming complacent. We we don't feel we've got everything completed. And city council is still investing, as they always have, since I came in 08, into stormwater and trying to correct those issues. Uh, 303, we'll be getting a new sanitary sewer. Um, Ron asked me this morning, Owen Brown is getting a new sewer, too, across the Heinen's parking lot and down Clinton Street. And that will help with some of the flooding. We have some of the old houses in Hudson up in the WRA area. They have combined sewers, kind of, if you want to call it that. They Their downspouts are connected to the sanitary sewer. When it rains, it overflows, and they want to run this bypass. Something I did uh, 30, 33 years ago. That's how I started out, you know, getting rid of those type of combined sewers. Flashing crosswalk signals. Um, we try to regulate where those go. It's been on council in the last few weeks. Um, we're going to be putting seven of, them up, seven of them around the schools. There is a criteria and a policy for that. And um, basically, I think it's been working out well. We, we want to keep them highlighted to certain intersections. We don't want to just put them everywhere. Traffic safety has become a, a big concern. Uh, we've been doing lots of traffic safety studies as it shows down at the bottom. And uh, keeping up on that, again, not becoming complacent and making sure that we're uh, providing safe pedestrian sidewalks and streets for the uh, residents. Next slide. Our challenges. Um, the new one, cybersecurity. Um, you know, it just was one of the things we weren't expecting, and we we stayed up on top of it. We are insured. Most uh, government agencies that I know of are not able to say that. Uh, we do get insurance. We do actually have training all the time with our staff and our elected officials to making sure that they're not being hacked or they're not going into some malicious software. Um, we bought new equipment. We got new firewalls up. So our IT people are right on, on, on the mark with that. Hiring challenges, seasonals and part-times, it seems to have uh, kind of leveled out now. We're doing a little bit better. But a year ago, couldn't find people that wanted to do uh, the golf course and, and other parks-related seasonal work that we always hired. So we had a shortage, and we had to come up with new ideas on how to get those people in. Um, EMS, we came up with new policies and procedures on how we hire people. Um, the volunteer firemen, and then the police department. We we don't have an issue with our police department like some places do, but uh, we, did, we didn't we did want to become complacent with that either. So we looked ahead and uh, our chiefs have, and then their staff have done a great job on keeping um, the people in those jobs and making sure that we, uh, we keep bringing in new people. Vehicle shortages. Can't find these vehicles. Um, the SUVs, the Ford Explorers that the police department uses, you can't buy those off the lot. They are specially made, uh, they're called pursuit vehicles. Well, um, council uh, recently, I asked because there was vehicles coming up 
in case a vehicle came up at a, at a, um, um, a dealership and a community didn't want it, and it was a, it was a police rated vehicle, <clears throat> I wanted to be able to be the first one in to say, hey, we get that vehicle. So uh, council trusting us gave our chief and me the ability to go out and buy those vehicles when they came on. Other cities had to go back to their councils and their mayors and get all kinds of legislation. We were already done with it. It gave, gave us a few vehicles, and I'm proud to say we are up to speed right now on all the vehicles um, that we were in shortage of since 2020. We hadn't gotten anything since 2020. They weren't making them. So we are now up to uh, par, and uh, the chief is very happy. And the fire chief is, I believe, getting one Dodge Durango um, vehicle. So that'll help him. Supply chain issues, we were worried about that. So we started ordering things ahead of time. When one of the things uh, I'll, I'll use as an example is traffic signals. Traffic signals, the, the actual poles are hard to get. You got to get eight months in advance. So we buy them ahead of time. Then we hire a contractor and we tell them there's the poles. They're able to put them up in a timely manner and our projects stay on time and hopefully under budget. Um, and inflation, we've seen huge costs of 100 to 300% in different uh, wiring and everything from Hudson Public Power to the IT people. So next slide. Development in Hudson. Um, I think a lot of you know the Pegs Foundation is building over there at uh, First Street and North and uh, 303. We have the Acme uh, renovations, which are going on. Um, you know, significant historical structure, the Boy Scout cabin dedication this last week, which was great. I was happy to be a part of that when uh, the group came to us and um, Councilman Foster came to us and wanted to make sure that we were able to help. They got the the grant money from the senator, and that was that was tremendous. So. Um, land development code, we're always making changes to that. Uh, we put those in front of council since I've been city manager. We were always doing engineering standard updates once a year, and land development code seemed to go for a couple of years and decided to maybe put them on an annual track, which is making it easier. Instead of having this large, broad brush type of re revisions, we were able to do some smaller stuff, which keeps everybody on focus. And then we're just some more supporting our businesses, obviously, in this time. We're trying to make sure that you know we know every business. Every business is different. They all have different issues, and we want to make sure that we're um, working with them as much as we can and giving them the support they need. Next slide. The comprehensive plan, in case you haven't heard, the steering committee council uh, appointed is going, uh, I believe, every two weeks. They're working on different aspects of the steering committee. They're going to be in... Uh, uh, kind of separating into some subcommittees on some of the bigger things like the YDC property, the former youth development center up on Hines Hill Road, the downtown phase two, community centers, senior centers, things like that. So they're going to be breaking up into their little uh, subcommittees and talking about those major projects. We hope to have this done um, by early next year in 24. So, and you can see the different things that they're going to be looking at. Um, it's all on public uh, access, and you're able to watch any of their meetings, and you can attend the meetings if you'd like. So, uh, next slide. Economic development. Um, again, this is uh, we're doing well, and but we don't want to come complacent at all. We've you know uh, had a few companies that had some issues in the recent months in the news, and we wanted to support them. We are, you know, making sure that we're kind of keeping our ear to the rail, if you want to say, because I want to make sure that we're staying ahead of the game if anybody is looking to expand or size down because their employees are working from home and they don't need such a big office. So our economic development team has been monitoring that pretty well. And uh, we don't expect to see, as that one uh, note says there, um, a large expansion in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, it just seems like everything sort of has leveled off. And then the bottom one is very important to us is the business rent retention, which uh, I think our staff is doing really well. Next slide. Special events. Uh, I think a lot of you know, we, we probably have more now than we ever had. Uh, there's just a short list of everything. Uh, those are some of the big ones. I won't go into all of them, but every one of these events, I think, brings our community together in one way or another. Um, they're, they're what Hudson, this is the foundation Hudson was built on. And uh, I, I really enjoy this. I mean, I think from everything from the Memorial Day Parade, you know, to the Chris Kindle Mart, um, you know, touch a truck and Hudson Farmers Market, it's just screams the city of Hudson. And I think other communities would love to have what we have. And it doesn't take much just getting it organized. Next slide. 
So again, the topic for today is the city services, and Jim asked me to speak, and I said, oh, absolutely, I'm more than happy to. Um, our, our new public works facility, we want to hopefully get that thing going. It'll be located on Hudson Drive. Um, we hope to design that next year and then start building it in 2025. That'll make us more efficient, bring all of our departments together, and uh, make sure that we get the services out to everybody from Hudson Public Power to snow plowing to leaf pickup, you know, to the velocity broadband. And every other uh, department that works under public works will be able to be housed out of that one facility. Right now, we currently lease spaces uh, on Georgetown Road. We own a space on uh, off of Hudson Drive on Hudson Gate. And uh, anyhow, we want to combine all those. And then we have room for expansion. One thing I saw in a previous position I had was that the community did not expect expansion with their public works. And I wanted to make sure we didn't make that same mistake again. And uh, we have enough acreage there to accommodate anything we need. We will design it and we can do pieces of it if we want, but the plan will always be there for the next city managers and, and, and the people who follow us. So it's, I'm always trying to look ahead, especially at this point in my career. I wanna make sure that we're laying the groundwork for the future generations. Water system expansion, we will be meeting with one of the local neighborhoods that we that were in the former township that we would like to try to get expansion of water to. Um, and that'll take place this fall. And then we have four other ones that we're going to do kind of in a series so we don't do them all at the same time. But we're looking to expand our water in, into those area neighborhoods in Hudson. And then also areas outside the city limits. Council approved a rate increase. Um, so we, they, we charge them 50% of anyone who wants water outside. Currently, right now, Peninsula and the village of Boston Heights uh, are looking for water sources. And uh, this is a good way for us to get money back and then put it back into our infrastructure in town. Hudson, Hudson Public Power is doing fantastic. Um, they have great technology. The crew down there has, has really become very efficient. Um, right below the, the pickleball and tennis court complex is the outage call program. And they can actually determine a lot better today where the outages are, who's affected, and get messages out. So that is a, a tremendous thing that I want to bring up on council, just as a discussion item to let all the public and council know of the technology that we have now. And, and it's, it's, it is. They should know about that. That is a wonderful thing to have. The tennis and pickleball courts, hopefully uh, any of you have gotten out to use those. They are being used uh, all the time. I pass by the pickleball courts or standing room only, I think. So it's been a wonderful complex that the uh, parks department put on. And the parks uh, have a master plan, just so you know, and they've been kind of sticking to it. So it's uh, it's been wonderful. Um, and they're improving the parks, making them safer, adding AEDs. Uh, recently, I was in a park and I just drove in and I thought, you know, there's an AED at the restroom. But who would know that if they're not from our town, if they didn't go to the restroom or walk, you know, over at Hudson Springs and walk, pass by the restroom on a way to a trail. So we want to get signs out front that say AEDs are at the restrooms at all our parks. So people know, especially if they're not familiar. Next slide. City services. Um, in the last three or four months, I had the public works department um, look for efficiencies, how we can improve service on our snow plowing routes and everything else. They did an extensive survey. And uh, they satisfied me. And that, that's, I got to say, it was one of the things I, I was trying to make sure that um, we are doing the best we can. We have 350 lane miles in our city. So when you look at 91, there's four lanes out there by Joanne. So each one of those would be considered one lane. So times four, that's where you get your lane miles. But we do Route 8. A lot of people don't know that. We have one, one big truck that does that. Um, we have 217 cul-de-sacs, which... Those are hard to do sometimes in five municipal parking lots that we maintain along with all the other roads in the city. The um, leaf pickup, we you know have done a tremendous amount on that. I can't remember what the tonnage is, but we, uh, we are one of the few cities that are able to dump very locally. We don't have to haul, as Jim was saying, you know, go to some uh, transfer station to take our leaves. We can dump them here locally. And uh, so far they haven't been charging us, uh, knock on wood. Other communities are paying uh, every time that they tip a, a dump truck. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll keep on that. Next slide. Ellsworth, Golf, Ellsworth Meadows Golf Club. Um, you know, basically we are looking uh, at getting a golf clubhouse, a new one over there. Um, and that was just on council in the last weeks. Uh, we purchased this in 1997. It was a ballot issue as it states up there. 
And uh, I'm glad to say that the course is doing fantastic. I mean, we have had the highest plays of, of anywhere, uh, of any time in the whole city that we've owned the course. So, and the course looks fantastic. Uh, I don't get enough chances out there to golf all the time, but um, everybody who tells me they go there loves it. So golf course is doing really well and uh, sustaining itself. Uh, next slide. Velocity broadband, the uh, the item up there at the top, we have five, we're on our fifth, our 500th business. We're going to have a, a dedication here in a couple of weeks on that. And we're targeting 1 million in revenue. So that, that was some goals that we had internally that we wanted to get to. It's doing well. We haven't expanded any staff and uh, the system's up and running. The newest thing we're doing there is uh, we're working with council and we're meeting with a uh, contractor on getting fiber to the residents. That's 10 gig fiber to all of our residents. Um, we're hoping that this will help spur some of these other fiber companies to start expanding into Hudson also so that um, you know they can get in competition with uh, the, the person that we're partnering with. We're not paying for this. This is this is not the city isn't going to be doing the, the contractor is going to be doing it and they're just going to be coming off of our line and then they're going to be paying us a, a specific amount each month from every house that they uh, connect. And that's going to help to build our revenue and velocity and pay down our debt, which, uh, again, is, a, is a, a, a model that no one else is doing. Um, other places like Summit County right now, I understand, are having some difficulty getting their fiber systems up and running. Um, we're ahead of the game. So uh, I'm glad to say that. And I think that comes to the point of we have a great finance staff. We have great administrative and, and engineering people that are working on these and, and the councilmen. So it, it's really, it's, it's great to have this collaboration. Next slide. Public safety, um, new for me, obviously. Uh, I wasn't always in, in police, fire, and EMS. Uh, my cousin was a fire chief, and um, I've had several others that have been elected officials in our family. But um, really a learning curve for me, and, and, and it's, it's great. I think we have the best public services uh, that I have seen around us. Um, we have people who think outside the box, which is key, and I can't emphasize that enough. They come up with new ideas on how to do things a different way. Again, not becoming complacent. You're going to keep hearing me say that. We're, we're looking always at new ways of challenging our staff and challenging ourselves and getting things done. And um, I can't say enough. And you, as you guys can read there, um, we, we, we're getting awards. We're, we're doing well. We're fully staffed. And people want to work here. So that's the other key. Uh, people love working for the city of Hudson. So, and I don't blame them. I'm one of them. So next slide. The emergency response. Um, we, after the East Palestine derailment, uh, probably two or three days later, I asked our assistant uh, city manager, uh, Frank Camarado, that I needed him to take a look at our emergency operation plan. We have one. It goes over everything. It goes over tornadoes, it goes over fires. It goes over train derailments and hazardous materials that get dumped. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we learned the most that we could. Two EPA were officials who were there on the ground, I think 16 hour days, they, they're from this area. We talked to them and, and found out, hey, what could they have done better there? What can we do in our emergency operation plan? So we had them, we had the resources and they were going through this as we were speaking. And I, I felt that was the time to hit. And uh, obviously we were you know, cognizant of their time and we didn't wanna take them away from East Palestine, but basically uh, we used them and, and we, we upgraded our emergency operation plan. So you as the public know that we have the plan, it's in place. We're able to implement it at any time. It goes through everything from who calls all the churches. So in case residents are taken out of their home, we have churches that will take people in. Where will the Red Cross go to? you know, the high school, for example, and there's a person in charge uh, in our staff on that. So we're a team. We train on this and our safety forces have been doing this for years. They train, I think, every week on, on different aspects. So you can see the safety force training, which is a good segue to that. Our safety forces are trained all the time and they stay up on things. And you hear other stories from other communities. They weren't properly trained. I think so one was uh, a dog, uh, a canine unit down in Southern and it's a difference of, of training and not having training. And our, I, I stand behind our staff has the best training, I think. Crisis communication, again, goes back to our communication team. We have um, the Hudson Cable Television Network. 
We have the grant writer who's also, you know, puts on the events. We have our communication. They all work together. And, and that's what you want as residents. You want to make sure that we're getting the most efficiency uh, out of our staff as we can. Code Red and Hudson E-News, all these different little avenues down here are the media that our communication people look at every day. And as you know, you can sign up on, you know, down at the bottom there at our website. Next slide. Communication, um, probably one of the cores of my being in the sense is, you know, every problem I have, I can solve with communication. And I see it every day from personnel issues to resident issues, to council issues and, and major project issues or whatever. Um, communication, just always communicating and, and trying to make sure that you get all the feedback and, you, and it's key to everything we do in the city. All these are the different websites and, and you know, Let's Talk Hudson that we're trying to get information from everybody on. Um, HCTV has done a fantastic job and uh, they're, you know, they're, they're finally, they're backed up with the um, money that they get from the cable franchise fees. And I'm happy to say that we stay underneath that budget and a lot of people are cutting the cable. So we're still below that. And we're looking ahead in case we ever do have that cable cut and meaning there's no more revenue coming in to fund it. We have backup plans on how we're going to do that. Next slide. 24 and beyond. Um, happy to say we're doing well. You see all the infrastructure we're putting in. Um, we have a great, a great budget. We have a great balance and um, the city is moving forward and I'm happy to be a part of it. So um, any questions in the next slide I'll put up just so you guys have that while if I'm answering any questions, but I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask if the city is planning to uh, hire any staff to address our growing senior population like our surrounding cities have. And number two, is the city planning to not let the volunteer senior organization continue using City Hall for their activities? Okay. Great question. Um, we have looked at other communities around us, like Stowe has a senior uh, person that runs the senior group. Um, I actually was in Stowe when we, when Mayor Fritchell built that um, Stowe complex down there. We bought that house and renovated it on 91 there, right by the water tank. Um, well, very familiar with it. And um, we, we are looking at that with a comp plan as part of the rec center and the senior center. And we wanna make sure that, you know, if that is something that the community would like to have, staffing would be a part of that. Where would they be located? What amenities would they need? You know, th that, that kind of stuff. And the lower level of city hall, they are, they are down there. I think almost weekly, I see them down there, uh, the, the group. So we have no intentions. Uh, they, they, they continue to book those rooms when they need them and when they're available. Um, I don't think there's any issues with it, but if there are, I'd be happy to, you know, follow up with that if they, if anybody's having, but I haven't heard from the director if there was any issues. So. Tom, George Snyder, good to see you. Thank you for your presentation today, which I thought was excellent. Uh, I'm going to follow up and talk about seniors from a different angle, which is the uh, question, the perpetual question on Hudson with senior housing. Uh, phase two, which seems to be stuck on a groundhog day sort of, <laughs> scenario, but maybe that's going to break loose sooner or later. But there's also the YDC property. And I know the city for probably 20 years has been trying to sell that for industrial slash corporate use uh, because that brings income tax into the city. But so far as I know, nobody's interested in buying that. Uh, and I've talked to various people who said, you know, you know that, that would make a wonderful Walden, you know, for the city of Hudson. You know, you could have a really, really nice housing development out there. And I know there's sewer issues and all that kind of stuff you'd have to address. But is there any discussion about doing something with the YDC property other than a corporate and industrial use? There is. We're looking at all kinds of different options. Um, we've had multiple different groups come to us, not just industrial. Last year, we had an industrial developer that wanted to develop the site, um, but the, the, the dollars didn't work out for the city and we didn't want to you know, have to enter into that. Recently, we've had other you know, people that are not in the commercial and and 
industrial uh, development. They're in other things of different complexes. Uh, some of them have brought in housing. Um, I just don't think we're ready to pull that cord yet until the comp plan reviews it and gives us some suggestions. But we did put the for sale sign up there to get interest and peek and find out like who would be wanting to move there. And uh, quite honestly, uh, George, it's been great. They We've gotten some a variety of people who have come to us and said, you know, we would like to do something from a park setting to a tree, you know, you know d d d farming to, you know, that you got your environmental and your solar to sports to commercial industrial. So we're waiting to find out what the steering committee uh, directs us on and we're happy to follow through with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question because you answered that earlier, but I would like to just uh, say that uh, over the past 15, 20 years, we've uh, known each other quite well, uh, starting with phase one and, and uh, phase two. But I would, I would just like to say that through all of that, you have been very responsive and very interested in hearing what the citizens have to say and uh, responding accordingly. And uh, that's one thing you have always done very well is communicating. If, um, if we've ever had a question, we've gotten an answer uh, very quickly. So thank you for that. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate the kind words. I'll, I'll keep it up. I won't stop doing that. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Madeline Lapiti Carino, and I want to thank you for the excellent presentation today. I have a question about the um, overpass on the uh, Owen Brown Street with regard to the bridge. Um, I am concerned about the safety due to the narrowness of the bridge in that, and I wondered what the city was doing with regard to that bridge in the with. Um, and are you working with the railroad with regard to that? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a great question, too. Um, the underpass, as we call it, at Owen Brown, underneath the railroad, uh, the cut through, as some people call it, in town. Uh, a few years back, we wanted to put a sidewalk underneath there. So we have plans designed from Lenox all the way over to Morse Road. And it's a, it would be along the south side, along the windstreams side of that uh, property where they used to be at. And it's, it's raised. So there'll, there'll be two directional traffic underneath there. We'd be putting in the smart signals, which unfortunately I, I just remind, remembered, I did not speak about that, but the smart signals can sense better than any other signals that we have in town. We're gonna be building those in next year. We got a grant. We put it back a couple of years just because uh, we got this grant from the from the state and the federal, and it was 2.4 million, give or take, and uh, you know that paid for all of it. So that we were going to pay that out of general fund, about 1.8 million, because it's a state project. They always run up a little bit higher uh, because they got a lot more red tape and paperwork. But again, there you go. There's another two million dollars that residents didn't have to pay for because we waited a year or so to get those implemented in. And with COVID and less traffic, I felt it was a good time for everybody, including us, to go ahead and wait that year to implement them. But we are putting in the sidewalk. We finally did get approval from Norfolk Southern. I'm, I thank thank you to you know Representative Weinstein and, and Christina Rogner and our city council members because they were the ones who helped us to get Norfolk Southern to, to hear us. And I think when the East Palestine issues happened, we weren't communicating with them. We were about 18 months of nothing, just dead silence, emails going one way and not coming back. So um, our representatives met with the CEO of Norfolk Southern. That person got in touch with the state people and of Norfolk and got us back on track, literally. And now we can say, you know, we're, we're putting it out to bid and that project is gonna be done or started, I hope in the next six weeks. And that'll be a sidewalk. You'll be, you know, safe when you go underneath the underpass. It'll be better lit too. And um, you know, somebody pushing a stroller will be safely able to get to downtown and go back out to the Brentwood area on that 
Um, and, and again, that was uh, something we've had on the books and it was delayed because of the railroad. As I was telling Ron earlier, I, I wish I could, you know, get these the, the, the different agencies in, in, that we're working with to, to do as well as Hudson. But at the end of the day, I got to stand back and look at my staff and go, everybody should have appreciate all the work we do because you know look at look at what we can always get done and it seems like other agencies aren't as efficient as we can be and uh, I'd like them to be but uh, again I got my own city to run so uh, but that's the railroad on that we are sending I'll just hit all the railroad stuff real quick um, we did submit in for federal funding on the Heinz Hill grade separation bridge over the railroad um, emergency services just so you know when they get a call into that area they send two trucks because they have to send one in case there's a train stop there. We did approve the uh, new cameras so the dispatchers can see that railroad if it's stuck at any time of the day from the downtown police station. And then they can tell the, the emergency services that there's a train and it isn't moving. Also those message boards that went up, I wish we didn't have to put those up to be honest with you um, because the train stop and they're stopping northbound because they're trying to get into the Macedonia yard and there's some switching issue. And uh, believe it or not, the day our staff was leaving City Hall in 2020, I think it was March 16th, I was sitting in a room with the congressmen, senators, everybody, council members, and we were on the, on the uh, email with Norfolk Southern trying to get them to resolve these issues. So that tells you how long ago that was. And we didn't get anything really resolved out of that. I mean, I think everybody, all the elected officials left saying, okay, they're, they're going to come and do all this stuff. And I'm, I'm more than, I'm optimistic to say they will, but I just can't control them. And they didn't. Um, but now we are getting better answers from them. Last but not least on railroads too, quiet zones. Quiet zones are where the trains don't have to blow their horns anymore. So at Stowe Road and Hines Hill, you know, we're wishing we could get a bridge there, but in the meantime, they won't have to blow their horns anymore. And years ago, we got one up on uh, in Twinsburg Township there, or Macedonia, I'm sorry. Um, and we helped out with that one, I think back in 09, when um, there was money from the feds for that. But basically, um, the quiet zones are also another thing that should be done this fall. So kind of gives you an example of the the items on the railroad that we're working on. So it's, it's a struggle. I, I do, I do have to say it's frustrating. So, but. Hi, Tom. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hey, um, just an observation that the, uh, um, mostly from my father here that the uh, cemeteries look a little, they need a little bit of help. I think, um, I don't know. Could you tell us a little bit about, uh, um, what, I don't really even know that much about how they're administered and everything. Maybe you could just bring us up to speed on that. Yes. Um, the, the cemeteries, we have, I believe, four of them in town. And um, our, we have a cemetery staff. Uh, we have seasonal people that help and cut grass and, and maintain it, help dig the burials. Um, but we always can do things better. If there's something specific, I'm more than happy to address it with our staff. They just did the headstone um, renovations um, at the old cemetery there on chapel. So uh, basically that was, we wanna see if we can move that into different uh, other cemeteries also. Um, so Draper, which is out on 303, the, uh, the O'Brien Cemetery too, and then Mark Healy St. Mary's. Um, but basically we're, we're trying to get those old cemetery stones restored. That was the first place to do it. Um, we, we, we put in the budget for the next couple of years, the different cemeteries, and I believe it was $50,000 a year we want to get in those, those headstone renovations. But if it's grass cutting or anything like that, please tell me, and I'm more than happy to tell our cemetery guys um, you know, where they need to help clean that up. So, but thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. I have a question about we now have a fourth empty storefront on Main Street. What, if anything, is there that the city could do to help these small business owners or to defray in the area of taxes? Or what, what is there anything we can do to help these entrepreneurs stay in business or to encourage other people to come in and fill those voids? That's a great question, and it is something we're working on currently this month, actually, 
is that exact issue. Um, but when our economic development manager came on board, one of the things she helped to streamline, which I thought was very innovative, was if you are a small business, she wants to have just a forum with them and instead of having like a giant forum, which is not a problem to have that every year, but she would like to concentrate on if you're a daycare in our town, what are the challenges you have? And, you know, keep kind of the topic isolated to what they're going through and how we can help them. Small businesses, let's have the small business forum. And she's been staying up on top of that. We did streamline it too. She is involved more in that um, than before, but basically some of the bigger corporations don't need our kind of hand to hold them, but we are constantly staying in touch with them and offering them any support that they can and looking at innovative ideas on how we can better serve them and, you know, help them out. Again, we can't control rents on some of these locations, but, um, you know, we did talk to some of the developers and the owners of the property to say, you know, if there's any information or data we can give you, to help keep the rents down, we would be more than happy to do that. So that's kind of how we've been tackling it. But again, it's ever changing and we're hoping to you know, keep up on that as we go forward. All right, thank you. Before I have time, hold the ticket. I have been so remiss in not mentioning the dedication last week. It was wonderful. It was a fabulous day to be out. We had a wonderful crowd. Um, it was really a great event. And um, yep, thank you to Andy. Thank you to Kelly, the people who pulled it off. And the cabin smells so good. That was my first reaction. And when I walked in, I went, oh, it smelled like a cabin up in Canada. Yeah, it, it's, it's, if you were not able to attend and you did not see, have not seen the cabin, you have to go see it. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And the whole event was just wonderful. So kudos to those of you who, uh, who did that. And my apologies for not mentioning that earlier. So. I scored a $5 in the head. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it, it's really a gorgeous facility. Another great uh, contribution to the city. Um, okay, Tom, today we have a $10 winner to come here. So if you would pull a ticket, please. Thank you. Okay, 923-958, oh, Mr. Strobel, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, there's your envelope, and let's see if you can really be a big winner today. Okay, still in there. Come on, Ron, take money. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh my goodness, oh! we have a winner. We have a winner. Um, what does it say on there? What the total is on the jackpot is $346. So congratulations. I don't know where the who I don't know who gets that to you. Do you get that to you? Who's got that? Ben? Oh, ben. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Oh. Okay, just an FYI, we're all hardwired to, uh, when we do acts of kindness, that we, we're hardwired to feel better when we do that. Yeah. So get out there and do an act of kindness today and make it a better world. All right.